it's about who's teaching the Holocaust. It's how it's a standard for what are the basic parameters that that do not allow for the many forms of Holocaust um, of, of Holocaust uh, revision, distortion, trivia, trivialization. So when we learn in schools on certain historical subjects, let's say that they're learned according to curriculums in a box. Now we know, believe we all know you cannot put the Holocaust in a box, and every teacher and educator is going to teach it in their own way. But there should be boundaries, a, 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 a form of boundaries of what is just off limits out of pure respect respect to the victims. And I will say, you want to say, you know, there are educators out there who say you can't, you have to teach about the perpetrators. You have to humanize the Nazis. You have to, I, we can't control that. So if you're going to humanize a Nazi, okay, let's say we're going to take that track because we do want to understand that the Nazis were normal people. They were not beasts. They were common individuals who get, who, who get empowered through many different strains. How does the process grow from the National Socialist Democrats to everybody's a Nazi, to becoming a, a murderous Nazi? And now here we are that everybody's a Nazi. So, you know, I think that it's very important that people feel, number one, capable to come up with the, you know, we live in a a generation where if it's like less than 30, more than 30 seconds, nobody will pay attention. So you have to come up with your one-liner response when you are hearing something, but most people aren't hearing it, or maybe they're scrolling through it on their feed. Nobody wants to take the time and get outraged. We're all exhausted. So I believe that a proactive effort is always what's needed. So in every community, let's say there's one parent and in their community, they start a conversation and they don't put Holocaust in the title. Maybe it's about the abuse of history and you invite people to come, but the topic is about the Holocaust. Or maybe you promote a local gathering, a virtual gathering. And instead of it being only through a museum, it is simply a group of parents and grandparents who, wow, I don't know what to do. I heard about this and how would you respond? And maybe we can get some of our book club members to join the conversation. We want to go back in, I'm going to sound funny here, but in a way, go back to the old world, local, small, intimate community impact has a huge ripple effect. That's how we can go into our schools. That's how we can talk to the teachers, go to the teachers who are teaching the Holocaust, ask them what they are focusing on. What is their end goal? And are they protecting the integrity of what was the Holocaust in its own truth, not in the truth of the way it's been distorted today. I do think that also we have to say, what that you know, what do you see asking teachers? What are you asking your students to learn? I'm very big on reflective education practice. And I think that we forget to ask ourselves those questions sometimes, especially in a corona world, we're all very overprogrammed. So if we're doing it more one-on-one, -on -one, more small, intimate, and local initiatives, then connecting those local initiatives, finding each other, like the homeschooling networks that have grown, you know, over, especially over the last decade, there are ways that grassroots uh, impact can really be made.